Hi guys, welcome back to part three. I'm now going to go through the last kind of last couple of pieces, the configuring DHCP part four, AAA, SSH and configuring a DMZ um, with NAT, static NAT and access control lists. So let's dig right in. If you haven't seen part one and part two, I definitely um, encourage you to go and look at those because I'm following straight on from those parts. So let's have a quick look at where we're leaving off. So essentially what I'm going to do now is, at the moment we know that, for example, that this guy here has got a static IP address. Okay, but what if we had a large network with 254 hosts, for example, on this network? This guy here um, has got no IP address set at the moment, so we'll get him um, an IP address shortly. So let's, let's go here. So what we're gonna do first, guys, is we're gonna set up this DHCP server. So I'm gonna just go straight into, because we're in configuration mode, I'm gonna say DHCPD, so DHCP daemon, and I'm gonna say address, and I'm gonna say 192.168.1. So where do I want it to start? So usually you don't want it to start at one because that's obviously the ASA address. So maybe I want it to start at 10 and maybe I want it to go to, for example, 192.168 up to, for example, let's say 1.100, okay? And then what I need to state is, I need to say which interface I want to, to give out these IP addresses in. So in this case, I can simply say inside. Now, again, if you're not sure, you can use the context sensitive help. So again, if you wanted to give addresses on the outside, very unlikely that, but again, the option is there. So I'm gonna say inside interface to provide these. Okay, but now it's saying, okay, it's in this particular case, it's saying, oh, the DHCP pool range is limited to 32 addresses. Okay, so this might be a limitation of, I'm not sure if this is Packet Tracer or, in, or the, the license that's on this ASA, but we can see in this case, we can only give 32 addresses out. So what I'm gonna do then is, I'll just make this slightly smaller. I'm gonna reduce this down to, for example, 30, and that should be fine. So once that's done, I then need to obviously say, um, usually you obviously wanna give out an IP address, a subnet mask, a default gateway, but also you wanna give for example, a DNS address. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include that now. So I'm gonna say DNS, and let's use the Google DNS address of 8.8.8.8. I'm gonna say interface, and I'm gonna say inside. And finally, what I need to do is I need to enable the server. So in this case, I'm gonna say DHCP, um, enable, and I'm gonna say on the inside interface to turn this on. Now once I do this, guys, what I can do is I can basically Go to here, go to the IP address, and I should be able to run DHCP. Now at the moment, I've got the simulation tool on, but what we can see is starting off here is the discover message, the DHCP discover message. And that should go through discover, offer, request, acknowledge. Okay, so we'd have to keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing for that process to finish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed that up a little bit. I'm gonna fast forward my time a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I should hopefully see that this guy has got the first IP address. That's difficult to see there, but I can see he's got the address 192, once I said 1.10, with a slash 24 mask, 1.1 is his default gateway, and a DNS server address of 8.8.8.8. .8 so also I'm gonna do the same thing here on this PC, and just give that a little bit of time, and I can see that this guy's got 192, 1.11. So that's fantastic. I've now got that part set up where I'm doing DHCP. So the next part to do then, guys, is, is obviously, what if you wanted to have, for example, this guy, imagine for a moment, this guy is our ISP, and he manages our ASA for us. So we don't have maybe any technical expertise on the inside of the network. Um, now again, depending on the size of the company, you may do or you may not, but again, we, we could configure both options. So what we're gonna do is let's, let's say, for example, that we've got an administrator here, and let's say, for example, sitting at this IP address here, 1.3, and let's say, for example, we've got an administrator sitting on this network here. And this, again, is a private IP address, but let's say this is on the ISP's network. So what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna use um, SSH, because SSH is secure, it's a secure protocol, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up 
um, AAA, which basically stands for Authentication, Authorization and Accounting. So the first step to set this up, guys, is to go into the ASA. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up in configuration mode, I'm going to set up a new username. So I'm going to say username Greg, and I'm going to give myself a password. So again, this should be obviously um, a secure password, but for these tests, I'm just going to use simply Cisco. And then what I'll need to do is I'll need to say to the AAA, um, for authentication, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say SSH. So again, if I wanted to use different um, authentication, so if I want to allow Telnet, I could specify Telnet here. But again, we know Telnet is insecure, so this would be a very bad idea, particularly going over the ISP's network. And I'm going to say console, and I'm going to say local. Okay, and what this does is it's going to allow me to only specify the accounts that are on this if you like ASA. So in this case, it's just going to allow Greg with the username, with the username of Greg and the password of Cisco. So that's fine. I'm not going to use any sort of external, if you like, radius server or any other server for this quick test that I'm doing. So the next thing that I can do, guys, is I can set up a key pair. How I do that is using crypto key generate um, or SA, which is the name of the algorithm and I would need to specify the size of the key. So I'm gonna just literally specify 1024. Now on this ASA, I'm, it's already got a, a key pair set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click no to that, okay? Because again, remember, Packet Tracer is a simulator at the end of the day. So again, it has some limitations. So I'm not gonna bother creating a key, a new key pair. And essentially now what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to add in a rule to specify who can and cannot connect to this connect to this SSH. So at the moment, for example, if I try to SSH from here, if I go to command prompt, if I say SSH dash L, okay, now again, remember where this guy is coming from. This guy is coming from in order to for him to communicate with with this this, if you like, ASA it would need to communicate on that outside interface, the 209. So what I'd need to do is I'd need to go Greg, and then I would need to say the IP address. So it'd be 209.165.200.226. Now this is gonna fail, guys. And the reason why it's gonna fail is it's, let's go back to real-time mode so we don't have to wait around for long. Um, it's going to fail because, again, it's saying the remote host is not responding. But essentially what it's doing, the ASA, the packet should be getting to that address, okay, but the ASA should be throwing it out and saying, hey, you haven't allowed, a specified particularly on the ASA, who is allowed and who isn't allowed. And if we haven't specified it, it's a default deny. Also, we'll notice here, guys, if I try to do a similar process from here, from this computer, and do a similar process from here in the command prompt, let's... Let's try that. If I go SSH dash L and if I say Greg and if I say 192.168.1.1, if I do the similar thing, it's still again it's not gonna it's not gonna actually allow it. So the last command that I need to do, guys, is on this ASA, I need to add SSH and allow these, if you like, machines. So in this case, I'm gonna say I could I could limit this to to just one one dot three and say two five five two five five two five five dot two five five, but that means only that one IP address of one dot three would be allowed to access this. And I could say to finish that off, it would be inside. But what if I wanted to allow everyone on that interface? Maybe we have multiple administrators from various different IPs on this one network. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow that on the whole network. And I'm going to say from the inside. Once I do that, it should be the last part. So now, if I try that command again, it should allow me. So this time we can see, for example, that I can type in my password of Cisco, and I'm in. So now I can actually get to, so this is now I'm remotely accessing this ASA. Now again, I'm only accessing this from my own local network. What, for example, if you want to allow this guy over here. And this ISP, the support person could be sitting in you know, a different country, for example. So let's finish the, the last command off there. So let's say SSH and let's say 172. And if I just check his IP address here, it's 
dot three and what we're going to do is because this guy we're only going to allow to lock this down a little bit more let's say specify just this pc alone three dot three and let's use a full 32 bit mask to just say this guy and also the last part here i'm going to say outside once i do that hopefully now we'll just double check that this guy's ip address was three dot three and it is now if i try that command again it should hopefully give me the prompt and it is so in this case i can log in using greg and likewise i can go in here and i'm now able to come to show root and see the routing table of this asa so fantastic i can now ssh across the network okay we're on to our last step guys so we're nearly there the last step is to configure the dmz so what if this guy wanted to get to the web page of this guy so how would that happen well, at the moment, remember, this guy is in a completely private network, and this network hasn't been set up yet. Also, guys, um, what we also need to think about is, we've also got to have an address that this guy would need to send, because again, how will it access this private network? We've got to need to have an address that it would allow this network traffic to pass through the ASA to get to this server. So what we might do, guys, is we might... I'm just looking at the time here we might do one final video because again to just walk through this last part um, part five of this configuring a dmz and to create the static nada entry and to add some access control lists we might just um show that in the last video okay i hope this has been valuable to you and thank you for viewing see you in the next video